the black metal classic band known as Zargeist. Sargeist. Sargeist? Well, I pronounced it correctly somewhere in there. But that name actually derives from two uh, bits of two different words in different languages. That one of them means coffin and then one of them means spirit. So it's like coffin spirits or something like that. But this band is my favorite black metal band of all time. This moment is the moment you've all been waiting for. The time when I'd actually get to the, the band that I hold to be the best the best and it's not like i've said this before you guys have all been waiting for this one moment and this band was formed by a badass black metal master guitarist by the name of shatrout that is also from other favorite bands of mine like behexen horna behexen horna you get the gist he's a master okay he's been around the block when it comes to finnish black metal this band started with Shatraug doing guitars, bass, and vocals in the early days, and his vocals were pretty badass. I don't know why they got another singer. He was a good screamer. And they got some other guy named Gorseed Martyr on guitars and bass as well. And then you had Make Karn on drums. And with that lineup, they decided to put out one of the greatest, most awesomest black metal demos of all time. That's right, once again, we are going there. We are reviewing a demo as well. And no, I am not a demo debut dumbass. This demo is so good, I actually consider it an album. And for black metal standards, it's not even that demo-ish. I mean, it just sounds like a black metal album. So let's get to it. Tyranny Returns. <laughs> This demo is just a pure killing spree all the way through Rifts Ahoy. They pretty much take the classic Dark Throne traditional black metal approach and they do it better. Now that is actually something I don't say too often because I do and will talk a lot about bands that do the traditional black metal style but Zargeist are the only ones that really truly were that consistent at doing it and every single time I think they pretty much just outdid the shit out of Dark Throne. Just right from the bat you're getting hit with some incredible songs. Anti-Human Black Metal Wrath. Amazing song, amazing title. Then you have a really weird one with weird chant singing that's, you know, pretty popular in Norwegian black metal. But Shot Truck does a pretty good job on it. It's actually a really cool song. Night of Sacred Wisdom is pretty damn cool. <laughs> Then it starts getting really badass towards the second half of the album, and Paler Prince, Sinister Glow of the Funeral Torches, and my favorite, the riffy badass song, Iron Blood and Blasphemy. Oh my god! <laughs> Then Shatrug decided to hire an actual vocalist, a guy by the name of Hoth Torog. And this dude is pretty damn good. Honestly, I don't really notice a change in vocalists. Then again, I hardly notice a change in vocals because black metal is just. <laughs> and Shatrug fired all the other members except for a Hoth. Or Hoth. However the fuck you say that. And he got this drummer by the name of Horn. So Shatrug does bass guitar and vocals on the fourth song of their first album. We are talking about the classic black metal masterpiece, Satanic Black Devotion. And it just starts out strong right off the bat. The title track has this enslaved, early enslaved specifically, because that's the good enslaved, style inspired riff in there. And it is super, super catchy. One of my favorite songs.
classic after classic after classic glorification, Panzer God, the band title, Zargeist, final song, Returning to Misery and Comfort, and the best damn catchy anthem on the album, Black Fucking Murder. <laughs> Fantastic album. It used to be my absolute favorite. Now it's my second absolute favorite. And I would actually say start here if you want to get into the band. Pretty easy to get into. Sounds like classic Dark Throne, but like I said, the better. <laughs> Now, Disciple of the Heinous Path is amazing, but it's not as good as the other two, I'd say, maybe. It's six songs, which I like. It's pretty short, and it has some cool badass epics in the middle, but it starts to drag a little bit. The whole middle of the album, once you get past the classic Remains of the Unholy Past, which has one of the greatest black metal riffs ever, it's super kick-ass. <laughs> But yeah, once you get past those first two songs, it's kind of slow sailing, which I don't mind, but it just goes on for too long. You have awesome songs, The Cursed Blaze of Rituals, the title track, Heretic Iron Will, but it just, I mean, I want some fast black metal, and you only get that towards the very, very end with like the last song, Echoes from Morbid Night. But of all those epic, doomy songs, I'd probably say the best one is Cursed Blaze of Rituals. That one is pretty fucking cool and creepy. Now instead of taking a step backwards in quality, even though it was hardly even a step, it was like a little bit of a your foot moving back, like not even an inch, like a centimeter back. They decided to take a giant leap forward on the next one and making my favorite album from them and one of the greatest black metal albums ever made, Let the Devil In. <laughs> what a classic album. They take that Dark Throne style, right? But they do it differently and they done do it good they do it even way better they take that style and make it super melodic and even a little bit better produced it's a very unique sound on this album all the songs are super unique and really well written amazing song after amazing song empire suffering immediately starts with a classic song on this album from the black coffin layer is super catchy melodic and rocking <laughs> Sanguine Rituals is super catchy, melodic, one of the most memorable songs in the album. It has a hell of an atmosphere. This album is not perfect without, of course, the Doomy songs. And there's two really, really good ones. Twilight Breath of Satan is really melodic when it comes to, you know, a Doomier song. But the best one of the Doomy songs is, of course, Nocturnal Revelations. Wow, what a creepy fucking song. <laughs> The music and the atmosphere was just absolutely on point on this album. And I almost forgot to mention they actually added someone to their lineup, so not only did they add another layer of awesome musicianship and songwriting, but they even added another member. They have some guy named Va Vinaja, Vagina, something like that, on bass, and I don't hear him because it's black metal, so I can't comment on if he does good or not, because I don't know, I can't hear him. But before we move on to the last studio album, once again, we must talk about something that I would consider an album, but it's actually technically not. And no, it's not even a demo, it's not an EP, it's a compilation of songs that they had never officially released. They put them on like 
you know, splits or EPs or whatever the fuck else. But they decided to put all of these essentially throwaway songs on one long compilation of 72 minutes and 14 songs. And unbelievably, for a 14 song throwaway compilation, it's one of my favorite albums from them. Let's talk about the rebirth of a cursed existence. Wow, all the way through the whole thing is filled with classic sounding songs. I can't believe these were supposed to be bonus tracks and just little extra songs on the side throwaways. It doesn't sound like it. Every song is badass. But amazingly, all these songs were made and recorded in different eras, but they remixed it to all sound like it was recorded at the same time. And there's only one or two moments that kind of contradicts that sound. The rest of it sounds like just one cohesive album. It's cool, it starts out with more slow-paced rockin' stuff like Reaping with Curses and Plague and Sinister Glow Funeral Torches. Wraith Messiah is an amazingly badass, incredible epic song. <laughs> Dead Raven's Memory, amazing. Crimson Wine, amazing. Dark Embrace, amazing. The Crown of Burning Stars, amazing. All these songs are fucking awesome. If I had to pick a favorite, though, it's definitely something off the second half, because that's when the album just starts going full force, amazing material. I would say this one is better than Tyranny Returns, Disciple of the Heinous Path, and even their last album. I'd say it's maybe my third favorite album from them, if I were to count it as an album. Maybe even second yeah, actually, fuck it. Fuck it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I am changing my opinion mid-video. It is the second greatest thing they ever released. You must hear it. It is an insanely long album that is worth every minute, because all of it is flawless. Now we are on the final and fantastic final album from this amazing band. At the moment, we have Feeding the Crawling Shadows. Now, even though it is amazing, it is probably my least favorite album from them for this one minor gripe, is that it's actually kind of different. They change it up a little bit, and I like it. They change it to more of an aesthetic album, where it's more... The atmosphere that kind of sounds more muddly and super creepy it literally just sounds like a blizzard okay i really really like that shit but then because that it becomes a little bit less song oriented so stuff kind of starts blending together there's less differentiality between the songs and it's less riffy like i said it's more like atmospheric and shit but it's still good and weirdly enough some of the songs actually has hoth doing like lower almost death metal vocals which sounds kind of out of place but it still really works for me the obvious standouts of the last two songs funerary descent and my favorite the extremely riffy song on the album kingdom below So that's it from Zargeist. One of the many reasons why Shatraug and everything he touches turns into pure gold. He is the black metal mastermind of the modern day. Subscribe to the Downfall Network.